The Boys has taken the internet by a chaotic storm. What we see on the small screen is the final product of months of production and planning. But what do you think goes on beyond the camera? No, we're not talking about bloopers and funny moments with the cast. We mean the special effects that go into every other scene of the show. So in this video, we'll be talking about just that. First things first, who's in charge of VFX? The team is pretty big, so to any of the members watching this who are credited in the show, we're sorry, but we can't name every single one of you. The person we can talk about is Stephen Fleet, supervisor of visual effects. He's worked with DNEG TV and Framestore, both being VFX companies. But these aren't the only studios that handled visual effects. Other helping hands include Rocket Science VFX, Method Studios, Soho VFX, and more. Directors like Dan Trachtenberg were also involved in this side of production. People from these studios talked about the process of curating a perfect scene by balancing both the laws of physics and comic relief. You'd be surprised how some moments hardly follow any of Newton's laws because it wouldn't be funny enough. What are some of these scenes? Well, let's look at them starting from the first season, starting with the opening shot of the pilot episode. The first episode of the Amazon series is what really got the attention of many potential fans. Robin exploding because of A-Train ended up being a hilarious meme on social media. The gore bit is a task on its own for the VFX crew. What we're interested in is the part where Homelander and Queen Maeve stop two bank robbers hijacking a van. A lot of layering went into these shots from the car flipping mid-air to Maeve, stopping the van by standing in front of it. The cool part is that Trachtenberg revealed that the opening scene was the last one they shot and had to be wrapped up pretty quickly. Showrunner Eric Kripke was concerned because he wanted the effects in this part to be as grounded as possible. Framestore VFX supervisor Pedro Sabrosa added how it was strange to keep this specific sequence grounded while the rest of the effects in the season are ridiculous outrageous. But then again, the opening sequence is what sets up the universe that viewers will be diving into even though it's filled with satire over time. The collateral damage taking place here is just a taste of what's more to come. Up next, Queen Maeve stopping the van. This scene is pretty straightforward to be honest. Maeve actress Dominique McElligot is so strong none of her super abilities were edited in. The crew told her to jump in front of a speeding van and she did so with no hesitation. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, that was a complete lie because if a human were to ever jump in front of a van, they'd meet the same fate as Robin. What the team did was install a steel beam for the van to drive and crash into while they edited Dominique's part separately. Her landing in front was done on a plate in front of a green screen so that they could add this element later. Although with some smaller details like coins and notes flying here and there, the fact that the crew actually crashed a huge van on a steel beam is really cool to look at. It's a blend of both practical and digital effects in one scene, giving the perfect money shot. Get it? You know, money and shot? Because there's a van and, oh, you know what, never mind. Coming up with the addition of comedy with VFX. Remember when we mentioned how the team disregards Newton's lifelong work just for a chuckle? Homelander's bit in the opening sequence did just that, and we bet Einstein and all the greats are all slamming their heads into their chalkboards when watching that. First of all, the laser beams are always digitally added in post-production. But we'll get into that in a bit. Homelander does all the flying with wires that keep him afloat and are removed later on by the crew. When he grabs the robber, he throws him out of the frame with the help of wires, of course, and turns in the other direction. As soon as he responds to a civilian calling his name, the thief drops onto a car in the background, which, if you think about it, is kind of impractical. The amount of time it took for the body to fall after being thrown into the air took a bit longer than it was supposed to. This was to add a little humor to the scene. Obviously, they didn't throw a stunt double from the rooftop. Instead, the body was digitally added to crash into the car in the background. Now for the science behind Starlight's powers. Physics wasn't completely ignored when applying effects to some of the characters in the show. Take Starlight, for example. Her power is, uh, absorbing light, maybe. Yet, no one really understood her power, but we think it's using light to make her stronger. What the team needed to study was how light travels in slow motion because most of her action sequences, especially the one against A-Train, are done in slow-mo. Here's where the study of femtophotography came into play, which is basically the way photons are visualized. 
Don't know what photons are? Well, it's time to pause the video and go back to opening those science textbooks. The crew actually researched this phenomena for about eight weeks and the final product was both flawless and beautiful. The important element in this was the small details that would be apparent even for a millisecond, like the reflection of Annie's photokinetic powers on A-Train's goggles. Studios like Framestore were very passionate about the tiny details you would hardly notice because those are what actually sell the whole scene. Shadows being left out or inanimate objects not reflecting light accordingly are things that are crucial for the success of an edited scene. Moving on to a few bits in Season 2. The next season wasn't as intricate as the previous one. Instead, things got a lot bloodier, and when we say bloodier, we mean driving straight into the guts of a whale bloodier. Storm Front's powers were basically special flashing lights to give the thunderous look to her abilities. What's worth talking about is the scene in Sage Grove, where we were introduced to a bunch of inmates at an institution with grotesque superpowers. Take Acid Man, for example. His power was puking out actual acid that would melt the surface of almost anything. What the team did was use vegan gel to give the vomity look and ran a tube into the inmate's mouth. Now, every time he sprayed the gel out, the CG crew would make it look a thousand times more dangerous and deadly. And to all the vegans watching this, we apologize on the boys' behalf for using your fine cuisine as a base for vomit. They just couldn't find an alternative. As for the other inmates, the squeezer, who would pop human bodies like toothpaste, required a blood lollipop. The special effects team designed this device, and what it would do was splatter blood 360 degrees on demand. This was probably used on the victims of Victoria Newman, too. What's more, love sauce was the hardest part to do. This hilariously special character was both fun and tedious to work on, as said by members of the CG studio Rhythm and Hughes. They had a lot of male anatomy to study, and it was getting kind of gross at a point. The long tentacle could have been entirely prosthetic and wouldn't need any special effects, but it wouldn't do the job in the final shot. Supervisor Fleet said that they had to make it as real and believable as possible. Steven also said that skin is one of the most difficult things to work with, with, it's not just some object that you can have blown into bits and pieces. The way they made the tube move, crash through glass, and wrap around M.M.'s neck was both hilarious and gross. Lastly, Season 3's battles. We've gotten a pretty good idea of how some of the basic effects are done throughout the show. Cars crashing, flying, and exploding guts are already established at this point. Now, the third season started off with an explosive bang, and if you've seen the episode, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. To keep this as G-rated as possible, a soup called Termite shrinks into the size of an ant and walks into his significant other's orifice. What? We couldn't think of any other word. Basically, the whole setting is real, including the magnified surface of the orifice. The scene was both gross, funny, and explosive. The VFX team sure did a good job 15 minutes into the season. On top of that, butcher actor Carl Urban commented on his laser beam battles against Homelander. He described it as having an intense staring contest and it would often get a little awkward a few seconds in. The lasers, along with everything else, were all added in post-production. There's just so much to delve into the world of visual effects, and we're hoping the next season will get even crazier. Well, that's all for this video. What are your favorite moments from the boys? Let us know in the comments below, leave a like, and hit that subscribe button to see more of our content. We'll see you in the next one.